Hello and uh, welcome to our channel CBIT. My name is Charles. Today we are going to be installing and configuring Unicenter EPOS software. We've got a vanilla install of Windows 10 Pro on the system. Okay, to install Unicenter OPOS, there are a few prereqs which need to be installed and there are a few little configs changes which need to be made to make it work. Uh, we found these out the hard way and doing a bit of uh, searching, but we've managed to get it sorted now. First thing we're going to do is actually go to their website. As you can see, the, we need to make sure we've got Java installed. We need to get MySQL installed, and then you need to get the actual software installed. We're going to do a fresh install. Not going to be copying any config over from anywhere else, and we're going to get this set up for you. So the so the first thing we need to do is install Java. Just click on that, and then we can just download the Java software. Okay, we've got Java installed now. The next thing is we're going to install MySQL. I'm just going to go down for the uh, installer and we'll download that. You don't need to log in, you can just download it. That's downloaded. Get this installed. Okay, I'm just going to select the custom install. I'm just going to then get the minimal amount what we need. So we need MySQL server. And workbench. And we're going to then just get those uh, set up, get the prereqs done. We can then click next and execute for it to install the actual programs. Okay, once that's completed, we just click next and next again. We're going to have this as a server computer. 
So there'll be a few applications running on this, which is the SQL and the actual software. It's all going to be in one. We're going to leave everything else as the default settings. I need to configure a root password. And we're going to add a user on here. Make sure you do put a strong password in. It's only weak because this is only a demo. You can then rename the service. Uh, use the uni center. Everything else is left as default. We then execute to get the configuration completed. And once that's finished, we just click finish and click next. And we can then just click finish. Going to make sure that we can connect to this system. EPOS going to put in the username which we've just created I'm going to test put in the password which you set click OK as you can see we have successfully connected to this database click OK and then OK again. So we know that this works. Right, next we're going to download the software. I'll just click the link. OK, to download the actual software, you have to go to the main page and scroll down. And then we've got the community site. If we click on there, we can then download the community version. If you go to files and releases to windows and we just want the top option select that we'll then download Downloading now. Problem with the source, source Forge's website, but we've still got the file. You just select it and get it installing. Select the language you require and the location of the Java platform. We've only got one, so there's only one in there. I just click next. You accept the agreement. You agree with it. You then set the installation directory. I'm just going to leave it as a default. Click next, next, and let it do its install. We then get an option which comes up here for the installation additional guides. I'm going to untick the 
readme file, click finish. At this point, we're going to run actual software. When it first runs, it will say there's no database and which we need to set it up. Just click OK. Then OK again, it'll open the configuration page. And then at the right side at the top, we've got database setup. We need to type in the username which we created and the password that we've created. We click connect, it won't work. First of all, we haven't set up any databases on the MySQL, but there's also some configuration that we now need to do in the Java to make it work. So if you click save and exit for the moment, we're gonna have to come back to here later. We now need to make the changes to the Java security configuration. Okay, the location that we need to go to on this where is on the C drive, program files, Java, the Java version, lib, and then security. There's a file here called java.security. Okay, to edit this file, what we're going to do is we're going to open up Notepad as administrator. Do that. Run the CMD, run as administrator, and then notepad.exe. I'm going to browse to that file. Going to change it to all files. I want Java.security. We need to do it this way because we will not have permission to save it otherwise. We're going to find and we're going to look for jdk.tls.disabled algorithms. What we need to do is we need to remove. TLS v1 and TLS v1.1 from the disabled algorithms. We then save it. I can close it. Once we've done that, we run the software again. Again, it doesn't know about the database, so we click OK and go in. Go to the database setup. And click connect. This time we have connected. We do not have a database that we need that we can connect to at the moment. So we need to create a new database. If you've already created a database, you can create a database. If not, we can click create database. We're going to create it. We're going to click OK. Save. We select the database which we want. Set it. And then we're going to click Save. And then Exit. We're now going to run the software again. And hopefully this time it will say it's found the database and we can do the initial configuration. As you can see, working database cannot be de detected. A default database will be created. Yes. Now going through the configuration of getting it set up. Okay. 
allow the firewall is turned on it is then configured ready to work thank you for watching if you like this sort of thing don't forget to subscribe like the video and hit the bell notification in our next video we will be doing the basic configuration of getting the epos software set up and customized for your business and getting the till receipts printing off how you would like them printing off